from birth to death, they were ill. So I always knew that their lives would be short. Mum made me angry. She was 47 when she died. She deserved to live life to the full. Everything I do is for them. I've been given lungs to breathe, so I breathe for my brother, sister, and my mother. I had three um, siblings all together, so I'm the eldest. I had two siblings with cystic fibrosis, and we're all 18 months apart, so Joe, Nick, and then Robert. Um, we, were, we were really close. Um, it was quite difficult with two siblings that were terminally ill. They spent a lot of time in hospital, and I would have to spend a lot of time helping my parents with looking after them. To leave school at 16. So very luckily mum came up with the idea of me going to live in Paris as an au pair. Learned French and started to cook for the family. Jo started to get very very ill from the age of about 11, 12 and then started to go rapidly downhill. Being in Paris um, when Joe was passing away was probably good for me not being in England watching her go. Leaving mum was very hard, I was very close to my mother, um, but mum was very clever. She sort of laid it across that it was a fantastic adventure for me. So I had to be a big grown up girl and do everything by myself. So while I was there, I used to do a lot of cooking. Um, for the family and so I went to the Alex Gardner cookery school in Dublin and trained as a chef. My two brothers then were brought over from England to go to school near Dublin. Life was good and then sadly mum started to get sick and she was diagnosed with cancer. She never worried about her own health. She was always a bubbly vivacious, smiley person, always smiled at everybody and anything, and her health was the least important thing. It wasn't going to be very long, so we got her into an ambulance, and um, I was in the ambulance with her, and we drove about half an hour to get home, and we parked outside the house, and um, she just died. Immediately, we tried to resuscitate her and we couldn't resuscitate her. So she died with me in the ambulance, but she knew she was at home. So I used to wear three strings of pearls that were mum's pearls, and they were in a way like my security blanket. And I used to spend my whole time fiddling with them. So I slowly started my business again from the flat um, in London. I had to do a wedding down in Kent. Finish the wedding, absolutely exhausted, get back up to London and that evening do my fiddling with my pearls and realise that I've lost my pearls. And it was just before Christmas. So mum had died in the October. We'd had our first Christmas after she died and this was a year later. I had um, one of my waitresses come in and asking whether I'd seen the guy who came down to assist with the wedding. She said, oh, I bet you he hasn't worked because he made a fortune selling the pearls he found. So I phoned him, got the pearls back, and his business partner found out about it. Rang me and said, look, I know that you know, you're a chef. I've heard this story. I've heard that your mother died. We've got a friend who needs somebody to um, chef for them um, over Christmas and New Year are you able to go out to the French Alps? Left on Boxing Day and came out and fell in love with Morsine. Straight away it felt like home. I've always loved France. I was lucky that I spoke French, but straight away it is a beautiful town. It's a very family town. It's very traditional. So it felt like home straight away. So I was then living in Morzine. My two brothers were working at the chalet that I would used to be working in. And Nick um, was doing some um, work at the chalet, this old chalet, and they were having to get a bathroom ready. 
Nick walked into the Dixie Bar, which was the pub in Morzine at the time, and just said to anybody, can anybody help build a bathroom? And Paul went, yeah, no, I can help. Um, Paul was in there, he had come out to do a season. Nick and Paul became really, really good mates. Paul invited me out for dinner, and I think my brother or somebody got onto the radio and um, said, of Francesca's having dinner with Paul or something like that. And we were in the restaurant and this came on the radio at the time and I just said, oh, well, everybody will now jump to conclusions. We might as well start dating. So then we started dating. We knew straight away that we would be together. So we just said so we need to set up our own business. Paul designed the hotel and then the architect did sort of the legal drawings. That was when chilli powder was created. Well, the main idea behind chilli powder was from having catered in these beautiful houses in Ireland, was that we wanted people to feel as though they, they were in their own home. We raise money for cystic fibrosis as our charity in the hotel, and I raise it by doing all my crazy adventure racing. One in five people are carriers of the cystic fibrosis gene. So the chances of Paul being a carrier is, is pretty high, really. But we didn't want to know whether he was a carrier or not. And we said that um, we would get pregnant, we would have um, the baby, we'd get the baby tested immediately. And if they had cystic fibrosis, we would deal with that as it came to us. So Ben, came out on December the 5th. Eloise was born July the 20th. Then number three, Charles and Jamie was born in November. Nick was working away in the, in the chalet. He had the most amazing voice. I can't take back the things I've done. He would go around into bars um, singing, singing at night. And he was starting to get sicker. Eventually he had to move back to the UK. Then in 2009 he died. Having had three children and running a hotel, you need headspace. I've got a lot of history. There's a lot that goes on in my head. I need something as a release. So I thought, oh, right, what can I do in the winter? And so I started doing ski touring. For the summer, I start to run. Hated running on the roads. The roads are very monotonous. The thoughts that I don't want to think about are coming into my head. So started to do trails. And on trails, you have to, you're running over stones, you're running over streams, you're jumping over logs. So you have to think at all times of the train. And um, there are some amazing trail running races all over the Alps. So then I thought, oh, I'll start entering into trail running races and love them. I think the race that I was most scared of was Manaslu in Nepal. Manaslu is 220 kilometers. A couple of the days are marathons and loved it. And I got fitter and I got more confident as I went around it. So I do all my crazy adventures so that I can breathe for my brother, sister and my mother. Mm -hmm.